and just sit in front of the fire and collect that heat. All right, here we go. Time for another solo over Night in the Woods. And guess what? It's finally snowing. So let's get to it. All right, so we announced that the midweek videos were back. And a few weeks ago, we actually made a do-it-yourself bushcraft auger. Then we took it out in the woods and we did a dowel connection where we simply flattened out two logs, cored into both of them, and then placed a wooden pin or dowel inside. That gave birth to what I want to do today. And I mentioned I wanted to revisit this. So today, it's the first ever on my channel, I'm going to attempt, and I say attempt because at some point, in my opinion, it may not be possible, but we'll get it figured out um, in the time constraints that we have. I want to make a 100% exoskeleton cordless shelter. And we're going to do that with our do-it-yourself auger and dowel connections. So let's give it a shot. Now before we get too far down the trail, those that missed that midweek video, and most did, I'll give you a quick recap showing how I made this and how we accomplished that connection. We have a natural flat spot right here. I want to make it a little bit longer. I'm going to put a stop cut right here and then we'll just even it out. So the idea is to take this flat spot, we're going to core a hole through it and into this tree and then add a dowel peg, boom, now we can lift this up into our bipod. So now what we're going to do here is we're going to drill into the side and use our dowel connection kind of like a wooden nail to hold it in place. And now for the tedious task of carving an actual dowel or peg or wooden nail to go into our tree and after doing this over and over and over again you'll appreciate all types of cordage especially number 36 and number 40 bank line that I've shown on my channel for years and years and years. So 
So the last thing we'll do is we'll round the end off so we can pound it in. And it's going to be entirely too long, but we can cut it down. What I'm going to attempt to do right here is auger a small hole in this. We'll go about halfway on top and then we'll switch to the bottom. And then add a small twig in there and see if I can use that as a pin, kind of like on a trailer with a trailer hitch. That way this piece won't slide forward or move around. And just be a secondary precaution. And we're getting there. All right, so far so good, we're looking outstanding. We have our dowel pin connection there to the tree as well. We're staked in the ground over here. This thing's locked down, we're in business. Now I wanna hang my tarp off that ridge pole. And as I mentioned at the very start of this, I wanna make this as cordless as possible, if not 100%, because I've never done that. And to my knowledge, no connections like this have been used for a shelter, maybe I'm wrong, but in a quick search, I couldn't find any. So to do it the first time would be pretty cool. I'm thinking wooden nails attached one, two, and three. The back end of this can be folded for a wall and the rest of it can be tucked under. And that way we're gonna have one opening with a fire out front. So bear with me, we'll get her done. Placing a wooden improvised tent stake through my loop at the end of my tarp, all I gotta do is stake it out and it should stay in place. Again, no cordage. So now we've got to figure out what to do with this excess material. And we're probably just going to try to tuck it up underneath here.
We are 100% cordless. Here's the reality behind something like this. Unless you're carrying some type of auger drill bit, you're not going to do this. Those makeshift wooden nails, who knows how long they're going to hold. Um, tent stakes out of wood from trees, we've done that several times. Those will last all day for weeks, months. Um, but wooden nails, I'm expecting them to pop off here at any minute. Or if a heavy snowfall occurs or heavy winds, probably tear them right out. So you only want to do something like this when you have no cordage. So here's the answer. Bring cordage. Um, don't be stupid. Don't be out there with these Altoid tins thinking you're a survivalist. Don't go out there with two, three, four, five items and thinking you're going to just, you know, be Rambo and get it done. Prepare for the worst, hope for the best. Carry what you need and train with your gear, meaning train with the gear, each piece of gear, and take the gear out, put it in the backpack, go on hikes with it, get used to carrying it, and you'll never have to do something like this. However, it's fun, and to my knowledge, has not been done like this, period. So, boom, there you go, YouTube. On that note, ciao time. Tell you what, you know what that means. My Etsy store is open. Once again, my Etsy store is open. Go to my video description box, click on my Etsy store, and check it out. What do we have in there this week? We have 50 green logoed hoodies like this one right here. They just dropped. So here's the thing with the hoodies. They're seasonal. Once we get to like springtime, they're going to go away until next fall. So grab them while you can. 50 of them just dropped. Along with that, we have our cold handle skillets different sizes. We have our meat forks, we have regular forks, we have our uh, logoed strikers, and and 50 Corporal's Corner cup and bottle sets. Just dropped. 50 of them are in the Etsy store right now. Now someone's going to say, only 50! He's got a million subs! Lols! Well, guess what? I'm a one-man show and I work seven days a week. And I'm working 12 to 14 hours a day making this stuff filming the videos, packaging the stuff, and adding 50 a week, that's a great task for me. So the fact that they sell out in 10 minutes, you can sit home and do your lulzin while I'm actually doing the selling. So once again, 50 cup and bottle sets and 50 logoed Corporal's Corner hoodies just hit. Once again, they're inside my video description box. Click on that bad boy and get her done. Now, one thing we always hear about is five W's, but we never talk about shelter placement, like facing the wind, around the wind, and it varies. Um, what I did with this shelter here is the wind is behind me. It's blowing that direction, kind of like in a diagonal across here, and the smoke is a good indicator going across there. You saw that earlier. The smoke was blowing like in a diagonal, and it's going across my shelter the same way. So any wind or rain and all that's going to come from back there this way. So just having these three walls like this, I don't feel any wind at all. So there's no wind chill factor. So we're looking at like 35 tonight. I'm going to hunker inside here with a wool blanket, dressed how I am. I have my Corporal's Corner logoed hoodie. Underneath I have a Expedition weight Merino wool minus 33 thermal and just my pants and socks. And I should be warm. 
Um, for several years, I just used that camouflaged um, hoodie jacket with the exp expedition weight thermals, and I was good. This type of shelter with an open front is meant for a fire out front. That's what the purpose is. What can, else can you do with this? We started for the first three loops, one, two, three. Back it off. This is a 12 by 12. Use the middle three. Now you can close front and back doors. I don't want to close any doors because if it gets too cold, I'm going to drag the coals out of that pit, put them out front here and light a fire. So that's why I want that option. I don't want to melt a door off where, where you roll it up at. I don't want nothing to do with that. So, but there's plenty of options with a 12 by 12 with loops and grommet connections. And that's why I'm sold on these. On that note, we're going to collect firewood up just in case and hunker down for the night. Catch you all in the morning. The first time I've had to use a wool blanket this whole entire winter. It's weird. I don't know what's going on here. A couple years ago, if you watch my videos, there'd be snow on the ground for four or five weeks, you know, making snow shelters and things like that. Just gotten progressively worse every single year. It wasn't too bad last night. We have temps in the 30s, low 30s. It's snowing right now, but obviously it's not going to stick. It's not 19 degrees outside. The ground's not frozen. So, it is what it is. Um, make for a bomb-ass thumbnail, though. I'll tell you what. Pretty much, it's coffee time, but like I said, the way we oriented the shelter, I don't feel any wind at all, and I'm actually comfortable right here, so. So we talked about this a while back, you know, with a poncho liner, poncho, large tarp, even a blanket, all you gotta do is make a fire get in front of it, put this over your head, and I'm trapped in probably about 85, 90% of that heat right now, just sitting here. And if I had to, I could rig this thing up and just sit in front of the fire and collect that heat. It's actually too hot right now. A lot of things you could do to make a microclimate and survive the cold. So just laying on the ground out here and hoping it all works out. What else we got to talk about here? Talk about the shelter briefly. I'm happy with something like this because I've never done it before. And the theory is there. I mean, that's woodworking tools and auger and making, you know, pegs for furniture, things like that. So why not apply that to a shelter, you know? Um, and that's simple. We did a whopping two pegs. Imagine do an entire structure like that. That's something to think about down the road. So one thing real quick, just thought about this. We talked yesterday about shelter placement. And I mentioned that most of the time you don't talk about that. And then I mentioned the five W's. And someone's going to say, he talked about it right there. One of the five W's is wind. Walls. Well, here's the thing. Yeah, wind, widowmakers, water, wood, and wigglies or wildlife. But most of the time they say, don't put your shelter facing the wind. Right. But they don't tell you how to read the climate. If you're next to a mountain and the wind's blowing east all the time, as you approach the mountain, it might create some type of vortex where it spins around you and starts heading in from the west. You know, it's winter time. There's no leaves on these trees. Everything just blows right down in here. Today, the wind was actually blowing the opposite direction that it normally does, which is weird for out here. You know, so things like that you have to be aware of. What time of year is it? Where are you at? What's the climate like? You know, are, is there mountains here? Are there trees? Do I have rock formations? Things like that. I'm happy with this type of shelter. Once again, has not been done on my channel and it proves 100% that it's viable. It's just time consuming. Could have whipped that thing together in probably about less than seven or eight minutes you know, minus cutting the stuff down and be done with it using number 36 bank line. So doing things like that is always cool and it makes you appreciate what you have. Honestly, right now, I'm going to end this video off because I want to sit out here in this light snowfall. It's nice and peaceful. It's quiet. 
throw some wood on that fire and I just want to decompress. Got a hard week coming up this week for me. Uh, I'll be in the forge most of the week, getting your guys' orders out to you. Like I mentioned, we got 50 more hoodies that dropped and we got the 50 cup and bottle sets. And I plan on releasing 50 a week for the next three weeks. And then we'll see what's next. All right, so this bad boy off. With that, all the gear in my videos can be found in two places. One, my Amazon affiliate page, and two, my Etsy store. Both links are found inside my description box. Now, please do me that favor. Hit that like and subscribe button, and then ring that notification bell. Once you ring that bell, please select all notifications. And as always, thank you for your comments, views, and support. Thanks for watching. Get out in the field, have some fun. I'm going to catch you next time.